Britain's West Country is famous for its spectacular coastline, rolling hills and chocolate box villages like Tollpuddle. A pretty nice place to make your life. And it's good for you too. According to recent figures, people in Dorset live longer than those in any other part of the country. But 175 years ago, it was all very different. Back then, the average life expectancy was around 40 years. Most people worked on the land as farm labourers. But they were at the mercy of landowners who had cut wages so low they were barely enough to exist on. By 1833, six toll puddle men had had enough. What they did next set in motion a revolution. One winter's evening that year, they met in a cottage at the centre of the village. Nigel Costley is an expert on the events of that night. They met upstairs and agreed to join and form an agricultural union to stop further cuts in their wages. No one had done anything like this before, so they all took a promise, an oath of allegiance and secrecy. So who were they? Two of them were local preachers. Uh, they were God-fearing, law-abiding farm workers, uh, and they came together to defend themselves and their families. So having met, having taken the oath, what happened next? The local squire, James Frampton, uh, got wind that they were forming a trade union and wrote to the Home Secretary, Lord Melbourne, saying something must be done to stamp this out. The word of the local landlord was enough to get the six men arrested and thrown into the cells in Dorchester. Determined to crush the fledgling union, a jury found them guilty under an obscure naval law which outlawed the taking of oaths. They were sentenced to seven years in the penal colonies of Australia and Tasmania. News of the excessive and unjust sentence sparked an unprecedented public outcry. In April 1834, tens of thousands of people converged on London. The plan was to march on Whitehall and hand over a petition containing over 200,000 signatures, calling for the men to be pardoned and their sentences quashed. Nigel and I are going to retrace their journey through the capital using an original map of their route. So, Nigel, what was it like that day? Nobody in London had seen the like before. The first big national demonstration of protest, all for six farm workers in Dorset. The government were in panic. Behind these buildings were eight battalions of infantry, cannons loaded at the ready for fear that revolution was coming. Having arrived in Westminster, what did the protesters actually do? Well, they delivered the petition. So large was it, it had to be carried shoulder high by 12 trade unionists. So they took it to the Home Secretary, banged on his door, and they refused to accept it. Lord Melbourne, the Home Secretary, was hiding behind the curtains upstairs, watching proceedings, but he refused to accept their delegation. But the people's voice was not so easily dismissed. Petitions kept rolling in from all over the country. MPs started joining the cause. Lawyers started arguing, well, actually, if it's illegal for farm workers to take an oath, uh, what about Freemasons? What about the Orange Order? What about members of the royal family who took secret oaths? So after two years, the government had to back down. Free pardons were granted, and they returned home in triumph. By August 1839, all six of the Toll Puddle Martyrs, as they are now known, were finally home. The story of the Toll Puddle Martyrs was a milestone. People power had reached the very gates of Westminster, forcing the ruling class to listen. Britain had taken another step along the road to becoming a modern democracy, and nothing would ever be the same again. <laughs>